there homespun friends it is great to see you today I wanted to bring you along and show you a few of the items that I have bought over the last couple of days I've made three stops recently I stopped at Dollar Tree I stopped at Family Dollar and then a couple of days ago my husband and I went to Lowe's so I wanted to show you some of the items that we picked up while we were there and I'm going to get started with my trip to Dollar Tree. Now this whole table comprises the items that we purchased. Um, I was able to find these cute little hats and purses that match for two of my granddaughters. Now I have a granddaughter that is five and I have one that's turning two. And um, the other granddaughters that I have are about to turn eight and then the other one is five months old. So they would not be able to participate in this particular deal. But um, I picked up this for the five-year-old for June. And um, then I got this for the granddaughter that's about to turn two. She's going to be wearing white and she's gonna have pink accents. And I also had these pink little socks. And so when I talked to her mom, she said, if you want to get her the pink little socks, go ahead because we could probably use the lacy socks. So um, that was some of the items that I picked up for them. And then I picked picked up these placards. Now I don't know how many of you have ever used these, but these are very handy to have. It's dental floss on a stick. And at the very end of the stick, it has like a little, it's not a fine point, but it's a little pointy area. And it really helps you, um, you know, to take care of those areas of your teeth when you're flossing that need to have attention. So I'm gonna put these in my car. A lot of times if, um, you know, if you're out during the work day and you eat somewhere, it's nice to kind of have a little cleanup afterwards. Um, you know, wash your hands and take care of these things. And then you can um, maybe chew some gum or something like that. So we're gonna put this in my car. And then I also like to keep some floss in my purse and I ran out today today I did so when I was at the store I picked this up to throw into my purse and it's handy for more things than just flossing so it's nice to have some of that with you if you ever need string you've got it right there with your floss now I don't know how many of you do this but it seems like to me that we just can't keep up with spoons I've talked to a few other women and they say that spoons are the hardest thing to keep up with in their house too um, but we have very nice silverware, but we use our spoons faster than any other thing. And right now we've been having a lot of soups. We've been eating yogurt. We've been eating some ice cream and we've been eating a lot of grits. In the morning, my husband has grit, grits. Almost every morning I make them for him because that's his favorite thing. And so we ran out of spoons quicker than any other thing. So I bought a few spoons. I've got, there's two in each package for a dollar. And um, so I picked those up and then I also got some of these hefty storage slider bags. There's only six in there, but I don't use them very often. I tend not to use them so much for food, but we will use them for things like if one of the grandchildren gets food on their clothes and they need a change, we will just put the dirty clothes or the wet clothes down in one of these for the parents to take home. So I picked up some of those. And then they have all of their spring candy, all of their Easter stuff was out. I mean, the weather here, friends, is phenomenal. Um, it is just phenomenal. It's in the 70s just about every day. The next three days, it's going to break records, record highs with, um, it's been, I think they were set like in 1927. In 1927 um, is the warmest February ever on record in North Carolina. That was the year that that was set. But it was also that March, the third snowiest March on record. So in February that year, it was extremely warm, record-breaking warmth. And the record still holds today, except that it's probably going to be broken over the next few days. And then in March, they had the third snowiest March, so it turned very cold and it snowed all through the month of March. We just never know in the South what we are going to get. But the weather certainly indicates that it's springtime. Everything is in bloom. The dogwoods are in bloom. The Bradford pears are in bloom. My Carolina jasmine is in bloom. Let me see if I can take you over and let you see. I don't know if you can see out there or not. Can you see that? Can you see that plant? Let me see if I can. That is full of yellow blooms that and buds that have come all over it. That's my Carolina jasmine out there by my lamppost. And then my Christmas cactus. I know I've shown you my Easter cactus, but I was in here. I told you I only water my cacti maybe once every two months during when they're not um, getting ready to bloom. So I was coming in here. I haven't watered this plant probably since January, early January. And when I came in, I'm in here a lot in the dining room, but it was turned this way. It was turned away from me. And when I was coming to water, I happened to see these blooms on it. And you can see it has other buds that are coming forth. And it is blooming for a second time back to back. Blooming back to back, friends. And it bloomed completely 
in right before Christmas and um, maybe the I don't know the week before Christmas the blooms were starting to die off and now it's going out again craziness I tell you nature is just going nuts but anyway everything at the Dollar Tree was out for spring and so I picked up a few things because I've learned if I don't pick it up now it's going to be gone when I go back a few weeks from now only go every few weeks to the Dollar Tree typically so here are some chocolate covered um, marshmallow bunnies I picked up a couple packs of those and then usually in maybe once a month or so once every five or six weeks we will have our family or some part of our family here for a little cookout or we will order chicken nuggets from chick-fil-a and I will make slaw or macaroni and cheese and we will have everybody here and so here are some plates that I picked up and this is a great deal these are beautiful plates there's 14 in there and here's the little matching napkins and there's 30 of those and then the little dessert plates there's 14 of those so I picked those up I also got some of these mighty malts now this is something that I really like to have around the house at Easter time this is one of my weaknesses and so I picked up two of those and then our grandchildren love these dum dum suckers that is probably their favorite thing that we have at our house and the, when we give it to them it's when they get ready to go home and they know that um, they recognize that when they get ready to go home if they get in their car and into their car seats without whining or crying then they will get to take home a couple dum dum suckers and we keep a huge mason jar full of these well it's been going down 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 and I kept telling Papa we have got to get to Sam's we need the industrial bag of dum dums and but we haven't been able to get down there and so when they were here the last time I was like man we have got to get some dum-dum suckers so today I just happened to see that they had them out with the spring things and I thought I'm gonna get a couple bags of these to tide me over until we can get to Sam's and then they also had this beautiful flag for springtime it was all rolled up in a package but I unrolled it so you could see it and that's why it's kind of wrinkled it's because it's been you know just folded over but I'm gonna let it hang out a little bit and I think that will be really pretty outside now I have a summer flag that is heavy duty and has our monogram on it that I put out but I use this in the backyard I use it um, right there at the patio wall many of you have been seeing my videos from outside before and so this will go there until it gets summertime I think it's very pretty and then our granddaughter that is turning eight now she is it's, she's more like 10. I mean, she is such a smart, smart girl and um, just really mature and precious. And we are so proud of her. And we were hoping we would get to see her before Saturday on her birthday. But it's not looking like we're going to get to because her schedule is packed and ours is packed. And she's the one granddaughter that lives about 40 minutes from us. And that doesn't seem like very far, but it's tough, you know, when her schedule is full and she has a lot going on and we do too. Um, my husband has a funeral to do or really it's a memorial service out of town on Saturday and that's her birthday. Um, but anyway, we're just not going to be able to get together. So we're going to send her her money and her card. And I love this pretty card. It's all glittery and it says your birthday's here, granddaughter. Hope it sparkles. And she's a sparkly girl so I think she'll love this and she likes to take her money and save it and she likes to buy books with it she's just um, just a really smart sweet girl you would love her if you knew her you would love her and um, so anyway her birthday is coming along and then I found this really um, beautiful little hang-up plaque I guess you might say or wall hanging it's wooden and it has this burlap on it that says Easter blessings and I found that at the Dollar Tree too so pretty so I picked that up and then I picked up five of these that's one for each one of the middle grandchildren now the oldest granddaughter that's turning eight would not get into this and the youngest granddaughter is five months old so she's not going to get into this either so this is for the ones in the middle and that we have a five-year-old girl a four-year-old boy a four and a half a three and a half year old boy and these two are just two months uh, one month apart actually one will be two in March and one will be two in April so that's the five middle grandchildren and they all love Paw Patrol they're kind of in the same age group right there together and um, they also love to hide and hunt eggs they they think this is just the best game that's ever been so when Easter rolls around and the springtime weather is here they are ready to hide eggs and get outside and look for them of course they want us to hide them so they can find them but I thought you know this would be a great way these all have little candies in them it has the little candy paws inside 
Um, but I thought this would be sweet. We'd give a pack to each of them, and then when they get home, um, some of these are siblings here, um, so they can pull all of their eggs together, and they'll have eggs to hide at home. And I know that their parents will be thrilled that we bought them all these eggs, but um, that's going to be something that goes along with their little Easter. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the oldest granddaughter since I'm not seeing her on her actual birthday. I think that for Easter, I might give her the little lip gloss set that we talked about. Um, the lip balm that looked like a cheeseburger and french fries. And I might give her like some bubble gum. I think she would probably like that. And then the baby, well, mm, I'll have to probably, I'm thinking about a, a teether because they have some that look like strawberries and some that look like apples and bananas. They have little teething rings and she's teething right now. So I think that's something that I might pick up for her little Easter treat. So anyway, this is all the things that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and that was today. And then after that, I ran up to Family Dollar. It's right close, and I picked up some oatmeal cream pies because my husband said he was hankering for those. We don't usually get Little Debbie cakes. We are not, um, we do not eat these very much. So anyway, we're going to do it, though, because he said, I just wish I had a Little Debbie cake. I wish I had an oatmeal cream pie like in the old days. So I'm going to surprise him when he gets home from work. He's going to have those. And then I bought these two really cute um, birdhouses. These were $3 each. And they have the little chain that they can hang up. And back there in the patio where I'm going to put that flag, um, we have a double shepherd's hook. And usually when it gets to be like late April or early May, we put uh, big hanging baskets back there. And they look so pretty. And we try to keep them alive all summer long, which is a real challenge depending on how dry and hot it is here in the south. But um, we you know, when we get through and take those flowers down, there's nothing out there. It's just the empty double shepherd's hook. And now that the weather is so pretty and warm and everything is starting to bud and bloom, it just stands out to me that those are empty. So I thought what I would do is um, I would just take these little birdhouses and I would put them out there on the double shepherd's hook to last until um, the next two or three months have passed. And then um, we will enjoy their beauty. And then I will put them up into my little laundry room area. And when fall rolls around, if our hanging baskets have died, we will put these um, back out. You know, you can just tell that in our area, we just don't know what the weather is going to do. And so that's what I picked up. So those are all the things. Oh, wait a minute. No, I picked up one more thing. One more thing for a family dollar. Some little... Um, ponytail holders. Okay, so there we go. That's what I got at the Family Dollar Store, and it was a pretty cheap purchase. Now, a few days ago, my husband and I went over to Lowe's um, Garden Center area, and he was going to purchase some fertilizer for our yard. It is time for the pre-emergent fertilizer to go down, and February is the month in our area where that needs to go down. And we could see that there was going to be some rain coming up, just a brief period of rain coming. And he really wanted to get it into the ground so that that rain would kind of gently, it wasn't going to be a heavy rain, just a sprinkle shower type deal. And he wanted it down so he could get his grass looking green come spring. And um, we priced it there at Lowe's and it was more than we really wanted to pay at the time. We've paid that before for Scott's. We have bought the name brand when we first moved here. But... It's just not something he wanted to do right now. So instead, he went to Southern States, and he was able to find the pre-emergent fertilizer, a generic type brand, for about $70. And we have an acre of land here. And so he was able to fertilize that entire acre of land. He said towards the end, he was dialing it down and putting it on very thin in the backyard because he was about to run out. But we got that down. And But when we went to look at Lowe's and to price things, we found a few other things we wanted. He picked up a three-pack of these great heavy-duty gloves for five dollars and uh, one of those has, be, has been used it's outside right now um, there with all of his tools and then I also picked up my seeds now I know some people order their seeds from um, a magazine things like that but my husband and I don't have a huge garden it's just the two of us and um, we have three raised bed gardens now the first year that my husband and I lived here we worked very hard on our yard um, this is only our third summer coming up uh, that we have lived in this house. We moved in in the fall, and the next summer we worked on cutting down some of the trees in our backyard that some of you have seen so that it wouldn't block off so much of the golf course. And we had a lot of uh, scrubby trees and things like that we needed to get rid of, and so we worked very hard, and we really worked into the winter on that. And um, we also built our three raised bed gardens, and we composted them in the lasagna method of composting. 
and our garden did not do good at all. And I think one of the main reasons that it did as we were looking back on our mistakes is we did the lasagna composting, but we only waited about, I don't know, maybe a month before we actually planted. And that was not long enough for all of that compost and paper to break down and actually make a, a nutrient that the plant could use to bear fruit. It got green and it grew tall, but it just didn't give us any vegetables. And so that was pretty much what we did the first summer that we were here. And we worked all summer long on that, and like I say, even into the fall and winter months. And then last summer we went back out to the garden we put more soil in but we did not do the lasagna layering um, we just added some fresh compost and we planted and we had a great garden it did die out and get very dry and we did not have a wonderful system of soaking our garden when the heat really pumped up i mean we had days 99 100 degree heat with like 99 percent humidity and no rain no rain for weeks and weeks and it, it was a terrible drought and so keeping your plants and your vegetables and your fruits watered during that time is really tedious and and my, i will admit it i want to give up very quickly my husband does most of the watering at that point because i'm getting discouraged but um but anyway our garden did much better last year but this year we're hoping we're going to have you know the third time's a charm we're going to have our garden grow all summer long into the fall now into the fall we did get some peppers we still got hot peppers and we got green peppers and let's see was there anything else we got some tomatoes a few little tommy toe tomatoes on up into the fall but they just were not um you know it just wasn't the best that all of our plants were dying and it, it's hard to watch that when you put a lot of time and energy into it the first half of the summer so anyway what i'm going to do with these seeds is we will not use them all um, I'm going to start them indoors in this little kit I'm about to show you and then um, I will not use all of the seeds and so what I will do it's great if they can have all of the air removed from them I will use my Ziploc food saver to um, put them down in a heavy-duty bag and I will pull all of the air out of them and then um, I will put them in the freezer and I will leave them in there until next spring when we get ready to do this again and I will pull them out. I will allow them to come to room temperature and then I will cut them open and use them and they will be they will be great. So this will probably last us for two summers. And so we got some of the black seeded uh, lettuce, the Simpson lettuce. And this is something that will grow um, now. I mean, this it's time for me to start seeding this now because it's a cooler weather plant. And then we got some of these um, uh, Bush Blue Lake 47 beans. We like the bush beans better than the pole beans just for our particular garden. For a raised bed garden, it's a little bit easier. We got the poinsettia hot peppers. Aren't those beautiful? We got the um, California Wonder Sweet Peppers. We got the Garden Sweet Burpless Hybrid Cucumbers. We got the Summer Squash. We went ahead and got the Early Prolific Straight Neck Squash. We love these uh, long keeper tomatoes. If you've never had long keepers, they are so good. We have a man in our church that grows these and he was able to give us tomatoes off of his garden for, I don't know, it was in November when we got our last tomatoes. It was amazing and they're called long keepers for a reason. They do keep for a long time and they also um, continue to produce for a long time. And so anyway, we've never grown these. We've never been able to find them, but they had them this year in the organic variety. All of these are organic seeds. So we are going to grow those and then I'm going to plant these four clocks right there near the patio wall. I started the first summer that we were here planting four o'clocks. My great grandmother had four o'clocks. My grandmother had four o'clocks. And in other places where I've lived, I've had them too. And so I really was determined to grow them. But the place where I'm planting them does not have very rich soil. And it also has a lot of large roots underneath the ground there where the trees have just spread like wildfire under the earth. And so it's tough to get something to grow. So the, for the first year, I did not have but maybe three or four of these that actually came up. And they will seed themselves. They have black little pellet seeds that drop off. And so I planted them the first year. I just had a few come up. They seeded themselves. But last year, I went ahead and bought another packet of seeds. I bought two or three packets. And I seeded again. And they came up much better this year. Much better. And so what I'm hoping is all of those died off and dropped their seeds. And I'm hoping if I plant these again now, they will continue to get more and more full. I want them to be really full. I've had them like that before. 
but where I planted them at the previous house was in a much better location, a richer soil, and that makes a big difference. But you know, we can't change the fact that where I'm trying to plant these is not the best. So we're trying to mix in some rich soil into the area where these will go and see if we can get them to really be prolific um, this season. And then I bought this um, seed starting uh, cell greenhouse kit. This was about $5 for this. And it comes with these little pods, this pellet. You put water to it and of course it will expand. And this is where you put your seed. And these seeds germinate and then when they get to a certain size, you're able to take them out and plant them in your garden. And all you need is the seeds, the light, and the water. And um, it even has this little paper where you can, um, as you start your seeds in here, you can write down what is in each little pod. You can follow this guide and follow what's in each little pod. And I will not be starting my lettuce probably in this particular tray. I do not want to um, fill up this tray with my seeds just yet because it's still pretty early for most things to be growing. Um, I will probably wait a few more weeks for that. I'm starting probably tomorrow planting my lettuce and I will probably do it in one of my paper egg cartons. Now this is where you can put your, you know, keep your water down under there and then these seeds will continue to grow in these pellets. Now these pellets will expand and they will fill this up with a mixture that is perfect for um, seed starting. And so that's what this kit is all about. Um, I've had them in the past. Sometimes I go without having them, but my husband said, let's go ahead and get one and start, start now, um, start back over because we've ruined some of the other ones that we've had. We've used them so much in different places that we've been. So that's what we did. Um, and so if you come across these and you want to have a garden, you know, you might just want to jump in there and try. And if you don't have a lot of land, you don't need a lot of land, you can um, put it in a pot. You can use a variety of pots on your porch. Um, I have a friend that grows cucumbers on her a carport and she runs them up a string and she, it is amazing the amount of cucumbers that she gets and then she makes pickles out of them because that's one of her kids favorite things to eat so you just might want to jump in there and try a garden if you've never done it so friends this is what I have picked up over the last couple of days what are you buying right now that it is springtime I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you soon bye bye